it's like they were having a picnic on a train tracks. And we were like, hey, look, there's a train coming. You know, want to move over into this big empty field? And they were like, nah, that train's still miles away. And besides, that field doesn't even have sunflowers. And we were like, okay, but the train tracks don't have sunflowers either. And, and the train's closer now. And they were like, yeah, yeah, no, it, it could still turn. And we were like, no, because it's a, it's a fucking train. And they hemmed and they hawed and they made us promise to plant sunflowers in the field. But eventually, seconds before the train reached them, they got off the tracks. Well, m most of them did anyway. And what we learned on Tuesday night is that as soon as the train went by, they laid their stupid fucking picnic back on the same fucking tracks. After all, the sunflower seeds we planted still hadn't even bloomed. So yeah, once again, a depressing post-election hangover to record a diatribe in. Virginia, a state that Biden won by 10 points and one that's been basking in one progressive win after another for the last few years, decided to abandon the Democrats under little more than the promise the other guy wouldn't tell their kids what a bunch of fucking racists they are. They still haven't called the New Jersey gubernatorial race as of this recording, but even if the Dems pull it off, we're talking about a state Biden won by almost a million votes. Which side of the razor it falls on matters a lot for New Jersey, but one way or the other, Democrats lost big on this. Our side could barely be bothered to vote the second the existential threat turned a corner. Uh, the threat isn't gone, of course. It's just banned from fucking Twitter. There's another train scheduled to come down this same track, but way too many American voters need to be able to smell the motherfucker before they'll take it seriously. Now, to be clear, this has been true for a long time, right? The, the, the apathy of the average American voter is legendary, but we used to be more or less evenly apathetic on both sides of the aisle. That's no longer the case. Made up wedge issues, increasingly overt racism and bullshit conspiracy theories have left the right side in a seemingly permanent state of apoplectic agitation. Turns out the motivation they could never quite muster when it came to solving real problems was hiding in their bigotry the whole time. See, this is actually another instance where to know what's really going on in this election, you have to look to Moscow, but a different Moscow this time. This time it's the one in Idaho. See, like the rest of Idaho, the city of Moscow is increasingly a haven for right-wing anti-government theocratic nutjobs, but that city's doing it way more purposefully. The Guardian just ran an expose about their slide into municipal theocracy at the hands of Douglas Wilson, pastor and founder of the Christ Church in Moscow. You may have heard of this guy before. Many moons ago, he actually toured with Hitch in a series of debates about whether Christianity was a net good for the world and has spent all of his life proving he was on the wrong side of that debate. He also stirred up a little bit of controversy when he co-authored a book called Southern Slavery As It Was, where he argued that on balance, being a slave was fucking baller. Anyway, he runs this church, which, which counts about 10% of the city and its membership, and increasingly, he and the leadership of his church are gobbling up every important leadership position in the city with the stated goal to, quote, make Moscow a Christian town, end quote. Now, don't get me wrong, small town in Idaho with a population of 25,000 people, they're in no real danger of religious pluralism one way or the other. But avowed theocrats systemically taking over the levers of power should scare us no matter how minor those particular levers are. Think about how little real world experience the good people of Moscow, Idaho have with non-Christians. They're sitting at home staring through the keyhole of One American Network, Fox News and the right wing meme mill, swinging blindly at threats that don't exist. And all the while heaping power onto right wing politicians who do exist. And look, this shit is scary enough when it's just disingenuous politicians riling up their base with imaginary bullshit about critical race theory. But the tail isn't just wagging the dog here. It's slamming it back and forth like the Hulk did to Loki after the Battle of New York. I, I think it's safe to say, you know, Glenn Youngkin is just a rich guy milking that cow for votes. But there are plenty of people ascending to positions of power who actually believe this shit. That's way more terrifying. Sure, some of them are just paying lip service to theocracy to get the tax cuts. But at this point, a lot of them are also just paying lip service to the tax cuts to get the fucking theocracy. We should be terrified of them. And the most terrifying thing is that according to the election results from Tuesday, we're not. They're becoming increasingly militant right in front of us. They're not trying to hide it. We've covered multiple stories in the last few months about different religious groups buying up large tracts of land for military training. 
They're not even pretending to respect the wall of separation anymore. And we're sitting on our fucking hands confident that we're not in any real danger until they actually do that cross thing with the Washington Monument, apparently. Look, the overriding message of the last five or six years in American politics is that the Christian nationalists are willing to fight for this shit. And the message we got on Tuesday is that they are alone in that. 